looking at it now, I'm actually really pleased that she did it because I think it speaks kind of volumes to all the reasons I love her anyways. Three, two, one, go. Action. <laughs> No, it's not go, it's action. Action, okay. We'll do it with this. Three, two, two one, action. I don't even know how to start this video because I've never filmed an English video, but I thought this is the perfect occasion to switch to English because I'm here with Scott, who is my fiance. What? What? Some people might have already seen it on Instagram. Maybe you didn't see it and this is news to you. Um, I proposed to my boyfriend, Scott, and now he's my fiance. Now fiance. And this sounds really weird to say but we had a couple weeks to get used to it. Okay, so the reason why we speak English is because Scott is from New York. I am from New York. Yes. And people have been asking where we met, so maybe that's a good question to start on. So as Anna said, I'm from New York, but we did not meet in New York. We met in uh, probably the more American state you can go to, a little place known as Texas. Texas. Um, and yeah, we both met at a work conference. And yeah, we met at one of the after parties on the last day yeah. and hung out for five hours before both flying back to New York and Austria, respectively. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then we continued chatting. What I liked about us meeting, though, was that we met and we didn't see each other again until three months after that when I came to New York. Yeah. And we didn't, like, it, it's not like we met and like it one of, was one of those one night stands type situations when you meet at a party or whatever. Nothing happened. Nothing clear. happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> we were just like, we we're just talking and I was just so amazed. I was, I don't know. I was just, I liked you straight away and I, I really wanted to get to know you and I didn't want to mess it up. And that's why every time we talked, every message I would send, I would like read it so many times. Like I didn't want to mess this up. I was like, you're, I, I just want to have the chance to get to know you. And so we were talking on Instagram until we finally met three months later in New York. And I made it sound like I was going there. I mean, I was going there all by myself, but I made it sound like I was there in an Airbnb, which I was for the first couple of days. But then I basically mm -hmm. moved in with him because it was easier. Ich bin 30 Grad hier. Also sehr cool. Ich freue mich, freue mich voll auf den ersten Tag in New York. And it was just kind of weird because partially I wanted to film my trip. And on the other hand, I was meeting someone for the first time, really, and we were going on our first dates, and I don't know, it was kind of, for me as a YouTuber or doing this professionally, it was kind of weird to not show too much of that new relationship I was getting myself into. Yeah, I mean, it definitely was a strange dynamic because we went from having met each other for a couple hours in a city that we're not from to talking online for three months to basically living together after the first week in New York <laughs> that you came to New York. Yeah. And so we just saw each other every day and then I didn't have anywhere else to stay. Like my Airbnb was only booked for a couple days and then I basically just I mean I think we both we both kind of we didn't talk about it, but I think we both kind of knew it was gonna potentially go that way. Yeah. You know what I just remembered? That I was the one kind of asking if we're in a relationship as well. I just realized. <laughs> in the airport after that trip. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we did a little road trip, or he joined my road trip towards the end of my US trip. And at the airport, I kind of, I was like, okay, I'm leaving again. I don't know when I'm going to see you again. And it's just kind of, it would be too bad if we were just going our separate ways. So I kind of wanted to know if we're in a relationship or not. Yeah. And then I just dropped the question. I just said, I don't know, what did I say? I was like, so what are we? And you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> and you made me say it, which I hated. I was like, are we like boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> of course you did it right before you got on the plane yeah it was like it was like when they already called and also even morning. even with the question i would say like the next five times that we saw each other you know after five six weeks uh, in between in between you know meeting again it was always like their relationship was brand new yeah at least that's the way it felt to me yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was like we go back to being kind of like online strangers again to like them being in person and seeing yeah. like you know, is this what I thought it was, as good as I thought it was six weeks ago or four weeks ago? It was this and, uh, weird interval of not seeing each other for five weeks and then seeing each other for like three weeks. But was I was never really disappointed. Hard. I think it always got better. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, um, the main reason I wanted to film this video is I wanted to film it because I got so much positive feedback from women out there that said that they never even considered proposing. And I personally made up my mind last November to do this. Um, I did it just because I had the perfect moment in mind and my friend encouraged me. 
But after I, I decided to do it, actually one of my favorite YouTubers, Hannah Witten, uploaded a video explaining why she proposed to her husband and it really encouraged me. So I thought, why <clears throat> not film a video myself sharing my story because I think this is something that should be more normal and more accepted in our society and I think we can contribute by telling our story. So that's a little bit of the background. And now I think uh, everybody wants to know how I did it. I don't know where to start. We plan on going to um, see James Blake live in concert. He's an amazing artist. We've been listening to his music since basically since the day we met. Um, Scott sent me some of his favorite music and I really like James Blake, especially when his newest album, Assume Form, came out. It really resonated with me. The album is about like, I mean, it's everything from the beginning of a relationship to like the kind of nitty gritty details of what keeps a relationship going. And the concert was scheduled to be in October and then it got rescheduled to April. Um, and we decided to see him in Paris because I've never been to Paris and we just wanted to see him in a cool venue and we kind of liked the venue in Paris the most. I somehow had this idea in mind. Sometimes I, was, I would think of certain moments and think, oh, maybe Scott would, would propose there or maybe we were talking about it as well because his sisters met getting married and we just had a lot of wedding topics. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's come up a lot in the it's last year. It's come up a lot. Yeah, you naturally kind of talk about like, oh, could you imagine getting married there? Like, would you do a destination wedding? You kind of, I mean, it's part of getting to know your partner to see if they even want to get married, if that's the thing that they want to do, or um, if they are more the type of person that would elope or have a small wedding or a big wedding. So we did talk about it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's no different than couples talking about whether or not they're going to have kids. Yeah, I mean, it totally. Sometimes it's, it's a something huge that you determining should factor in a relationship. And then when um, James Blake got rescheduled to April and I was I think I was talking to my friend and I just said, oh, it would be so amazing to like, if he did it there, because it's James Blake, it's Paris, it's so cliche, but also just like, it would just be really beautiful. Um, and then she said, why don't you do it? And I had never considered proposing myself because I always wanted to be the one that is proposed being proposed to. Yeah. I think it's partially because it's just a norm that we grow up being surrounded with, the man asks, but also as a woman, just being the one that is pursued. Pursued is just the natural instinct or the natural, I don't know, what, what just people want or imagine having one day. And I always, of course, had that too, because <laughs> I grew up with it. Um, but then I put it as, I put that thought aside and I just thought, why not? Like, I want to show him how much I love him and that I want to be with him. And why do I have to wait for him to show me? We're equal parts in a relationship. It's not like one of us gets to the side and one of us should just obey, you know what I mean? And I wanted to, I wanted to do that. And I just, I couldn't, I'm a type of person when I put something into my head that I want to do or want to have, I don't back out. Like, it's really annoying, like I can't stop thinking about it. I would lie awake at night for hours and just think about it. And so, of course, I couldn't let that thought go. And I planned the whole thing, um, which was very hard for me because I hate having secrets or I hate having things, like big things like that, that only I hmm. am thinking about and I can't share with you. So that was really hard, which is also why I reached out to some of his friends to talk to them about it kind of get their opinions, but also get their help and have someone that I can talk to during this whole process. Um, so I mean, I, I was just surprised that you managed to keep it a surprise for, for that long. <laughs> it's hard for me to keep stuff like that in as well. Um, I mean, it was also something I was thinking about. No, I was like the, the thought flashed across my mind, like maybe propose in Paris at the James Blake concert. But I also just assumed from our previous conversations that you weren't ready. And so it was Which is something crazy. that felt like that <laughs> more more in the distance. I mean, it's like possibly an age thing. Yeah, he's um, 30 and I'm 23. <laughs> I had to think about that. I'm turning 24 soon. I had no, I had no conception that you were yeah. going to propose. He was joking though, which he can't remember, but he said a couple times stuff like, Oh, when Anna will propose to me, just like as a joke. Yeah, or, maybe my sixth sense knew. Yeah, just, you said the, things the two like, brain cells never clicked. Yeah, you said <laughs> things like, oh, we'll just pretend we're engaged and we'll say that you were the one who asked because we're a modern couple. And I was like, <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> so yeah, it was hard keeping it a secret from November on. 
But um, I was really excited. I even got a ring, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and everything was perfect. Everything was planned. We would have gone to New York right after Paris. Um, and the concert would have been April 14th. Yeah. Um, but then the coronavirus happened. We were in South Africa and we got the news that, I mean, it all happened very quickly, as you all know. Um, all these countries, especially in Europe, got infected. We were still hoping for the best, but of course it was inevitable and all the countries closed their borders, all the concerts got canceled, and so did the James Blake concert. And since I am very impatient, by the time we got back to Austria, my head was just full of, I should do it, I should do it, when will I do it? I was thinking of different ways to do it, but I hadn't come up with a solution. And then Scott said to me, oh, James Blake just announced he's doing a, an Instagram live concert. And I didn't, like, I thought about it for a second. Even my mom said, oh, maybe you should do it during that live concert. And then I said, no, it won't be so romantic. No, well, we have to give your mom the credit then. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I actually, I, she was like, should I drive to Vienna and get the ring? Because the ring hadn't arrived yet. And that was my main reason why I didn't want to do it during that Instagram live. First of all, because also we're in my family home in my childhood room. It was not really romantic. I always envisioned us getting engaged and then being on vacation or being somewhere nice. Um, I mean, this is nice, but it's not, it's not very intimate. Um, but then I said, no, don't get the ring. I'm not ready yet. Like it, it will be too fast because the concert was announced or the live Instagram live concert was announced a day before it happened. So I didn't even think about proposing. Um, we went into the room. It was the evening time <clears throat> and we watched, we started watching it. I knew I wasn't gonna do it and then I suddenly had this idea of how would, how I would like to do it. The song came on that I would have done it during in at the concert in Paris. So the song started and I was just I just suddenly got this rush of adrenaline and this crazy idea and I was like I couldn't like I said when I have um, an idea I'll just go for it. I just can't can't stop myself and so I reached for my phone and I typed into the comments Will you marry me, Scott? And I sent it before I could even think about it. And it popped up on his screen because we were watching a, the video on his phone. And it was just, I don't know, explain from here on how <laughs> you felt because it was your reaction. <laughs> I think if I was ever anticipating this and I wasn't, if there was a song that she was going to do it, it was going to be All Come To. And, and probably if I had proposed during it, anything related to James Blake, it also would have been All Come To. <laughs> If it's the last thing I do, I do, I do, I do. I'm in that kind of mood. I'll throw my hat in the ring. I've got nothing to lose. With you, with you, with you. I'm in that kind of mood. And I think the song really speaks kind of to maybe our entire relationship. I mean, it's all about. Uh, in this case, James Blake chasing his love and like being willing to kind of go wherever she's going, whether it's LA or London or Paris or New York, mm -hmm. um, and, and just being willing to kind of sacrifice and, and give things up that, you know, otherwise would have changed your path in life, like for that other person. And I think, you know, that's something that we've kind of both done over the last few years of our relationship. And I think is like one of the foundations of what makes any relationship work. Um, is, is that sacrifice. Oh, you're going to New York. I'm going there. Why don't I come with you? Oh, you're going to LA. I'm going there. I could go there too. I'm gonna say what I need. If it's the last thing I do, I do. And so, yeah, I mean, when she when she popped the question over Instagram, uh, <laughs> which is such a I mean, it was it was a surprise. Such I mean, a millennial thing to do. Yeah, I guess. Unfortunately, I immediately thought it was a joke. Yeah, was uh, like, Haha, it and was I, and I feel bad for that in, in kind of retrospect. I mean, I didn't, I didn't I, think I, it was I a joke. Like you funny. as a woman asking, I thought it was a joke because it just like I was so I was so taken off guard. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was not like a typical proposal setting. There was no candlelight in the background. There was no, I don't know, just not the mood. I mean, but the mood was set because we uh, yeah, were basically in a one-on-one -on -one 
it felt like we were in a one-on-one -on -one concert with James Blake and, and nobody else. I mean, there were 25,000 other people watching it, but... It felt like we were FaceTiming you know, him. They were silent, so yeah, it felt like in the same way that we FaceTime our friends, that's that's the way it felt, which was quite cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it was not until she started crying and <laughs> professed her love to me that, that I realized it was <laughs> for real. And, I was uh, crying a lot. I couldn't even speak. It was it was my turn to say something, and um, and we talked about it for like ten seconds, um, and then she said, "I think I need to ask the question in in real life." She was down on two knees, I think, at this point. And <laughs> yeah, was, we were both in bed, so I never <laughs> we were both, to get down like, on kneeling in knee. bed. And then I said, "No, let me ask. Will you marry me?" Uh, and, and, then, yes. and then I kissed her. And yeah, it was very sweet. I did so since I didn't have the ring, we did a we we kept it to ourselves for the first couple of days. Um, we're basically quarantined here with my family, or I guess spending lockdown in this house with my family, and we didn't share it with them because the first couple of days, I feel like it was first of all, it was kind of special having that secret, I guess. But it was also for us just the first couple of days figuring out how the situation is now feeling for us, like because I got the question as well. Did, any, did anything change since you got engaged? And I would say the first day or two, I was very emotional because I was, I'm, I'm an overthinker naturally. Like I was questioning everything. And also just the, the, the big elephant in the room, like, okay, so are, when are we gonna get married? Like, is this a thing we now have to talk about? For him, not having been the one that is proposed to, to that I proposed to, yeah. um, for you, it was like, all of a sudden you were engaged and you had to think about these things. Like I had time to prepare. I don't know, for us it was kind of this weird dynamic of you suddenly being Yeah, that's a good point. I guess I never had a Pinterest board of that. my of my wedding <laughs> put together, so I wasn't I might have. <laughs> from that perspective I wasn't prepared. Yeah. So for, I think we needed those couple days just for ourselves to answer those questions that were in the room. And we used um, our daily walks with the dogs um, through the countryside here in Bumland in Austria to just talk about that kind of stuff. Like three days later, we went on a picnic and I finally had the ring. So we, he, I mean, he already knew what was gonna happen. So it was not a surprise. We even filmed it just to have the memory. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I, it was not anything nerve wracking because we both already knew, but I did um, ask him again. I had like something written down that I wanted to read to him. the question and the ring didn't fit which is too bad but we're getting it resized. i mean it's not like cinderella's yeah it's high heel it's you know <laughs> we can get it fixed <laughs> yeah we get it we're getting it fixed. i mean he likes the ring which is great it's from anna inspiring jewelry it's a, an austrian jewelry brand and i love them and i wear their jewelry all the time um and the founder of the the brand actually helped me to sign the ring she kind of i mean i called her and i was like how does this work? When a woman proposes, do I need a ring? Like, is that expected from me? And if so, what does the ring look like? How do I go about this? Like listening to me talk about you, she was like, he sounds like someone who would like an engraving on the inside and who doesn't care about diamonds as much. I think one of the conversations that we had right after I proposed, or one of the things that you said when I asked you for your honest opinion, was that you said that you felt like I kind of took it away from you. Yeah, I think in, in retrospect, the words you took it away from me were, were, were not the right words. Um, I think in a lot of ways I'd always grown up kind of believing and, and you know, knowing in fact that I would be the one to propose. And obviously it was, it was also something on my mind already for us. Um, and so, you know, when you did it, I was surprised and also felt like, well, maybe now it's not a thing that I'll ever be able to do. I think in letting it kind of digest and, and, and thinking about it for a little bit longer, you know, I think in every relationship it's a 50-50 decision. And so me saying yes to you doesn't really impose, you know, my ability to also propose to you, whether it's in the next few months, like before we actually get married, um, or like some couples I've heard, reaffirming their love 20, 30 years later and, and doing a proposal then. Like, I think that's also a really interesting way of doing it. But mm. 
you know, I think for the time being now, like, yes, of course I want you to have a ring. Like I would actually like to propose and I'll do it in my own way and, you know, make sure that you're not walking around the streets with no ring and, and people <laughs> thinking that you're single and available for uh, the taking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I now know that it is happening. I just don't know. When. Um, but just so you know, you don't need to get me an expensive ring. I asked the question, how many people think that it is important to have an engagement ring? And a lot of people said they do think it is important. I can um, show you the statistics on the screen right now. But I think um, I'd rather spend the money on something that is more important to us, like having a good time with our family at the wedding or a good trip afterwards or just saving the money for the future. Um, so I do want to have a ring. I just don't think it's... You don't, you don't need to spend um, a lot of money on it. How do you know that you want to marry someone? What makes the difference for you between being an exclusive partnership and being in a marriage? Well, I think first and foremost, a marriage, I mean, yes, it's about love, of course, like you're affirming to a person that you want to spend the rest of your life together. And that sounds like a big decision and, and it is a big decision. Um, and when you put it that way, it sounds even bigger. But I think like, you know, there are some underlying factors of marriage that are not about love and, and also make sense, yeah. you know, for two people staying together long term. And that's everything from, uh, you know, finances to, you know, legal ways to stay in a country. I mean, it's not something that actively affects us today because we both have the ability to kind of live and work together without necessarily needing to be married. But you know, you can imagine if we wanted to have kids in the future, like that definitely becomes yeah. a bigger consideration that, that we would have to um, figure out. And, and without marriage, it becomes even more difficult to manage. Um, mm. And so, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know, when you know, you know. <laughs> I'm not here to offer relationship advice, but like I've been in other relationships and I, you know, I, I never saw the potential for marriage in that relationship. And so... You know, and sometimes you only really know that in hindsight. I don't even know when that click was. People asked me as well, like, when did you know that you want to marry him? I don't, I don't know. I mean, partially, I mean, it's just gradual. Like when we moved in together in Berlin and I noticed how well we're doing living together, it's not been hard at all. It's been great. We've traveled together. We've had times where we didn't see each other. We've had, we've had times when we were just getting to know each other and being together the whole time. We've been on like a three month, trip in Asia together, all these things have um, just made me realize that we really work well together. And then again, having a dog together, which is not a kid, but it is just like a kid in my eyes because we <laughs> love her so much. They're amazing. They're beautiful. They've got soul. They're amazing. They're brilliant. I couldn't, I couldn't invent a better thing. There's nothing as good, not a car, not money not a house, a dog. It's amazing. And we just shared this. It's a child that will never grow up. <laughs> yeah, we just shared this crazy love for this little creature and seeing him interact with her and care for her and love her the way that he does just like made me really emotional and made me love you even more. <laughs> and so like, <laughs> I think that's part of the reason Oh my God, no, I have tears in my eyes. That's part of the reason why I realized that you're an amazing person and that I want to spend my life with you is to see you be in that position and take care of Ellie. <laughs> that and a future doing. baby. <laughs> and a future baby. <laughs> no, yeah. There's no baby on the way, just to be clear. No. <laughs> not, not that I know of, at least. No. This is a funny question. My friend asked, was Ellie... How do you say it? Was in, she anxious about the word? No, in the know. <laughs> was she in the known? Was she in? I think I did tell her. I said something to her like, I'm going to ask daddy if he wants to marry me. At what point? I don't know. So she knew. Gladly she didn't say it. I mean, a few months ago, my relationship with Ellie definitely got stronger. <laughs> she was like, I guess I'm going to be stuck I, with him. I noticed, <laughs> I noticed a big difference between how Ellie treats me before and, and today. Did you know how he thinks about women proposing? Um, I think if I had asked my friend, my boyfriend, um, he would feel like I'm taking, I don't know how to translate this, his manlyhood away from him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the, the like classic societal standards dictate that the man proposes to the woman, but I don't necessarily believe that. I mean, it's a free world, Yeah. you know, like I, you're welcome to follow your heart just as I am. and. 
you know, I think like looking at it now, I'm actually really pleased that she did it because I think it speaks kind of volumes to all the reasons I love her anyways. Aww. And so, yeah. We also got the question what the reactions were from the family and how they reacted, especially to the fact that I proposed. And that was also something I was kind of afraid of to share this news with people and have negative reactions or people not understanding why I did it. But I have to say we haven't come across any, like we haven't told anyone who was like negatively surprised. Everyone was like, this is amazing. So cool that you did it. Yeah. Everyone was very happy. I think if anything, there were some cases where people weren't surprised at all that Anna was the one that proposed. <laughs> My dad was like, that's a classic <laughs> <Yeah>. move. <laughs> So yeah, I guess I guess that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, maybe. Generally, there were no. I can't think of a single negative reaction. Well, a to the engagement, but b to to the idea of you proposing. Yeah. No. You know, and like I mean, that's the world that we live in today. I'm sure in some parts of the world, like yeah, you know, this would be still shunned upon, and you know, that is largely speaking a, a tragedy. And I'm glad we have amazing friends and family that um, support us yeah. and support this decision of mm. mine or of us i guess my decision to propose to you <laughs> one last question who made the engagement photos my mom since we are in lockdown with my family we used my mom as a professional photographer and we took some photos in um, the area where i'm from in Bogenland. and that's uh yeah people were confused by that um because we shared photos it looked like the engagement but we were just joking around and we just took some photos to have uh, nice photos to send to people or to print out for ourselves of us together. I think we'll also set up a studio shoot as well. There are. There oh, yeah, are, we are. are I thought that photos. was a joke, but we are. No, it's true. There are some photos that I would like just for our, our book. Yeah, he was inspired by um, some of our friends, Lainey and Martin. I can put in a photo here because they're just so beautiful. And um, we really love that photo shoot. And yeah. we were thinking of doing some black and white photos, maybe with my friend Marco. Hit me up. Um, when this whole thing is over, um, we might do some cool photos. Okay, I think that's it. I think that was it. Um, we did get, of course, some questions on when and where and how in terms of wedding, but we would probably answer that in a different video or I'm gonna answer that by myself, but we don't really have anything figured out yet. August 27th, Tuscany, Italy, I'm kidding. <laughs> So I hope this story inspired you and maybe opened some of you up to the possibility of women proposing as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the the idea that we even question whether or not it's acceptable for women to propose still shows how far we have to go in kind of breaking down these gender norms. Um, and yeah, we've got, as a society, I think we have a lot of work to do. So maybe this video and our experience is just one more small step in that direction. Yeah. And uh, I also want to say that getting married is also not something that, I mean, I don't want to make this sound like this is a necessary step in every relationship. There's no one size fits all. Everybody gets mm -hmm. to make their own rules and decisions. And we decided to get married because we always envision ourselves getting married. Um, but there's all different kinds of relationships, all different kinds of people out there. And if you want the man to propose, that's absolutely okay. If you don't want to get married at all, that's fine. If you get inspired and you think you are you as a woman maybe want to propose, that's great. So um, I think that's the message, the main message that we wanted to share, that you shouldn't just obey certain norms or rules that are set out by society, but you should just make your own and just ask the question, do I really want this? Or how do I want this? Or is this really important to me? Mm -hmm. I think those things are really important. Well said. If you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel. I would love to see um, if this topic is interesting to you. I would, I'm happy to make more videos like that. Sorry if you're German speaking and didn't understand anything. Um, but it's hey, my fault. <laughs> you made it all the way it here. It will come. If you're English, English speaking and you would like to see more videos from me in this language, then maybe let me know as well. Maybe that's something I want to do mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, yeah. And if you have any experience with this topic or if you want to share your own opinion, leave it down below in the comments. I'm really interested to see what you think about all of this. And I think we'll wrap it up because it's been a long video and we are hungry. Are you hungry? I'm hungry. Okay, let's eat. Bye. Bye.
I was like, God damn it. Not in a very mean, like not in, not in a very. Just end it there yeah. and I'll talk. <laughs> you are. You, ooh, you stinky. Oh my God. Stinks. You smell that? Oh. I'm gonna say what I need. If it's the last thing I do